Good morning, YouTubers. It's a great day to not be doing car repair, but hey, it's for a good cause. So I think we can uh, all learn from this and fix a vehicle that's louder than hell. So today we're gonna be replacing a broken flex pipe on this here Honda with a new one. Now, I don't normally do exhaust work because I don't crawl under cars and I don't own a lift and I'm too old for the shit, basically. I'll sum it up. But I figured I would do this, one, like I said, for a good cause, and two, because I know a lot of you guys might need to do this to your own car, or you could also make money doing this to other people's cars. And money makes the world go around, so why not show you how to do this? So that's what I got for today. Let's get into it. All right, before we go and try and solve this problem of a broken flex pipe on this, I want to talk about something. If the flex pipe is broken on a vehicle that you have to repair, if it's your vehicle, somebody else's vehicle, question you have to ask yourself is why is it broken? And that's kind of like in welding in general. If you ever have to repair something, before you go and repair it, ask yourself, why is it broken? Because if you just go and repair it and you didn't ask yourself that question and you didn't address the problem as to why it was broken, it's just gonna break again and then you're gonna look like an idiot and nobody's gonna call you back because you, you fixed it, but you didn't. You know, you have to understand that people, like they don't understand something as complex as a car, a lot of people, and when you go and fix something and it breaks again, they just think that you're an idiot. So with that said, this vehicle is front wheel drive and the engine and transmission are in line. The exhaust goes out the back of the cylinder head here and then underneath the car, okay? That flex pipe is not designed to take inches of flex. You know, I'll grab it right here and this is an aftermarket one, but you look at this, there isn't that much flex to this, okay? The factory one was even smaller so it would have even less flex to it than the one I showed you. So the most common culprit on the, on, this isn't just Honda, but on any car, is bad motor mounts. And what happens is the engine moves so much that the pipe just takes all the stress and it breaks. So on this particular car, I looked at the rear motor mount when starting and then putting it in park and drive and reverse. And the rear motor mount seems to have a ton of flex. So this motor rocks forward and back. So we're gonna also have to replace the rear motor mount on this. Odds are the front one's probably bad too, but the rear one seems to be worse. The passenger side and driver side mount is less likely the culprit in this case because the motor does not rock like this. It rocks front and back. If you have like a V6 that's all wheel drive or rear wheel drive or a V8, and you're breaking flex pipes, those engines rotate like this. So that would be your side motor mounts, which those only generally have side motor mounts anyways. Only front wheel drive cars generally have four, a four mount system, one there, one here, one here, one there. So anyways, after I get this pipe tacked in, I will be replacing the motor mount on this. Now I'm not a mechanic, nor do I really wanna run a mechanics channel. So I'm not gonna film the replacement of the motor mount. Needless to say, it's very simple. It's a couple of bolts. You jack up the oil pan or something just to get the pressure off. You remove the mount, put it in. It's, it's a, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minute job. It's easy, but we're gonna focus on the welding. So let's go underneath the car after I get it jacked up and let's cut this thing out. So if you look here, this whole thing is all blown apart here, loose, you know, and that think that's really because this thing shakes so much because this rear motor mount that's up, basically up there, you can't see it, is bad. Now you can tell this was welded in. This is not the stock one. The stock one would have had a smaller bellows or whatever, and it would have been welded up higher. So. What we gotta do first step is to cut this bastard out and I'm gonna cut it as close as I can to this welded section. There's some BS hanger there and close to here and just get the center section out so we can make sure that the flex pipe that I have is the correct size.
All right, now that I got that thing out, and it's totally trash, by the way, the previous person welded in a pipe, and it goes a long way in here, kind of BS, but we have to see if that flex pipe I have will fit over this, and I'll grind this uh, weld down that's part of this hanger and just put a new hanger on, but I got to grind this outside diameter down as well to clean that up. Because my idea is is to slip fit it over this. Now, that may not work. In the local parts stores, the flex pipes they have are garbage. So I generally buy mine online. And I don't do many of these because, I, like I said, I hate crawling on the ground underneath vehicles. So anyways, we're going to prep this up. And then we're going to see if that uh, flex pipe fits. All right, so here's the setup. I slip fit this connector into that pipe quite a ways and then I'm going to weld it right down here. The reason for that is this weld has a lot of mass and it's going to be very easy to tie this pipe into here and not blow any holes and I'll be able to run pretty hot to do that. Now this over here, I had to cut the pipe, squeeze it, and then slide it into this. Now this is not my ideal situation. I'd rather have had a slip fit on the outside. The problem is, is that this is a metric pipe here. Same thing for up here. And I can't get a flex coupler handy, at least today, to make this work. Now this will be somewhat of a flow restriction because this pipe here is smaller than this is and it's a little bit smaller than this. However, the exhaust further down that ends up uh, necking down to even smaller pipe than this, so I don't really think it's going to matter. And this is only a 150-60 horse four-cylinder anyway, so who really cares? <laughs> now, you're probably wondering, why wouldn't I just kind of take this whole thing out and disconnect it? Now, those bolts up there may or may not come out. I would assume with a torch I could heat them and remove them. And the problem is, is that this right here, there's zero hope of getting these out. I mean, just look at this. And not only that, you know, I don't want to replace this catalytic converter. And I'm not going to shoot a video on how to remove one of these and then get demonetized. So that's not what we're doing in this video. But with this all set up here let's go talk about the welder setup and how i'm going to do this and then we'll come back and actually weld this all right so the setup i'm going to be using i'm going to be welding with this lincoln face mask i really like this for getting in tight spots because i mean look at it you know when you're wearing this it's almost like a set of goggles you gotta be careful not to set your hair on fire because that's not covered but you get what i'm saying here very good visibility in tight spots. If you wear a normal hood, you can see, I mean, look, look at the difference here. Like, so much bigger, very difficult to see what you're welding with something that big. So I would highly recommend something like this. It doesn't have to be a auto darkening. They make thick shade like, uh, how do I say it? They're almost like burlap bag masks, like foldable masks. That'll help you out in a pinch. Now for the MIG gun here, I'm using the stock Tweeko 180, which comes with this firepower welder over there. I'm not a huge fan of this for welding exhaust for a couple of reasons. One, look how big this is. Okay, now this isn't some industrial MIG welding gun for welding half inch plate, but still in tight spots, this is far too big to get in and it's gonna pose a problem for this job that we have. The second issue is this neck here does not flex. They do make flex neck guns, often called swan neck guns. Those very, very helpful on exhaust because you can bend the neck and position it to where you can get a weld right where you want it and let's face it exhaust is typically tucked up inside you know a tunnel or something underneath a car and any kind of flexibility you can have on your neck of your gun might might get the position right for you so you can weld it the other issue with this gun and this is typical of a lot of mig guns and i've mentioned it before the tip here is held in by the nozzle 
and you look at how big this nozzle is, it obscures your visibility. And that's another reason why I'm a bigger fan, honestly, of doing flux core wire with exhaust than gas shielded MIG because you can often get rid of this big shield and you can focus on a little bit longer of a stick out than with MIG and you're, you can just see better. And that's huge. You know, and flux core MIG or flux core wire has uh, more resistance or how do I put it? Welds through rust and poor material far better than gas shielded. But today we're gonna be doing gas shielded unless I have a major issue, then I will switch to flux core to finish the job. I think because I prep my material that gas shielded MIG will work. But hey, you know, for doing this, I would recommend honestly using flux core. It's far easier to weld out of position as you come up on the pipe with flux core than it is MIG, with gas shielded MIG. Now, is for setting the machine up, what I did is I just ran a couple passes at assorted values until I got something that had decent penetration inside. Now this weld has about the penetration, this one as well that I'm looking at. Now they don't look that good here. And the primary reason for that is I was just kind of screwing around with travel speed. This looks a little bit cold. And when I actually weld what's under there, I'm probably gonna do a little circle ease to spread the weld out wider rather than a single pass like this, but we'll have to see. You know, it's one of those things where I gotta do a little, a little experimenting more on this piece. And then once I feel confident it's looking good, I'm gonna start welding underneath. Now, it goes without saying that if you can't run a bead on, on some pipe like this that even looks remotely like say this you probably shouldn't be welding this in like you have to have some skills to do this job it's not a hard job but get pipe like this and just practice with it you know and then when you start welding on it if it's not looking good like it's too cold fix it don't just go and weld the whole thing with poor settings and make your <laughs> your exhaust install <laughs> look like a bunch of baling wire. So with that said, let's go and set up and start welding. So I'm gonna be running on this Predator generator that I bought because there's actually no power out where I'm doing this. So I don't really have a choice. This has more than enough power to weld uh, car exhaust. So that's awesome. I'm running on the 240 volt side and I'll just start this up. We'll be running this. You may hear it in the background, it's fairly quiet but I'm going to overdub uh, comments on this anyways as I'm welding it. So let's crawl under the car. So here's the result. On the left, the weld on the far left looks pretty decent. That's what you should be aiming for. 
On the right here, a little bit worse. I ended up going back over and welding that little extra bit on there for some more support. The weld under it doesn't look too bad. And the other side of the pipe is somewhere in between those two, so not my best work, not my worst work, but you know, it's exhaust and it is what it is, I guess, on that. And probably doesn't look like it, but the amount of room I had to work under there was almost non-existent. You know, this side was more accessible, which is why it was easier to make decent looking welds. The other side wasn't so. All right, well, I don't know if I showed you it earlier, but this is the one that was on it. It's broke here, broke here. I mean, it's just trashed. So it wasn't too bad of a job, frustrating to say the least. And I kind of expected that going into it because of that MIG gun I have that doesn't have a flexible neck and the nozzle's so big. This is, I'm telling you guys, go out and get yourself one of them Harbor Freight Titanium 125s because that gun is so small, you can literally get it in anywhere. And that's half the battle of welding exhaust is simply getting into the area to weld it. And, you know, you can't expect the best welds, you know, on exhaust, honestly. Could I have done better? Absolutely, I could have. <laughs> I'm a pretty big guy, and shoving myself underneath a car with just enough clearance for me to where I can barely move, I'm not going to put down the best welds, nor will you. So it's something to keep in mind. You know, ideally, I would have liked to have removed the whole exhaust, like, from the catalytic converter back and, you know, tacked it in place, removed it, welded it outside. But, you know, you saw how rusty that stuff was. The second you pull that apart, you're done. Like, you're replacing all of it because it's all rotted out. Now, ultimately, that's what's going to have to happen on this car. But at least for the next year or two, it'll probably be all right. You know, so it's something to think of. Now... For you that maybe you want to make some money doing something like this, I can tell you that you're not going to be making a whole lot of money welding flex pipes on a, a car simply because the amount of time it takes and the frustration level versus pay doesn't really work together in all honesty. But price-wise, you know, I don't do this kind of thing regularly, nor would I want to. But, you know, for a customer, I'd say 180 to 250 bucks to replace a flex pipe is in in the ballpark of what you probably should ask, you might be able to get a little bit more. I mean, a normal exhaust shop would bill at least two hours for the repair and at, you know, 90 to 120 an hour plus the part. So, you know, don't get under someone's car to do one of these, honestly, for less than 180 bucks. It's not even worth it. Like, trust me on that. And don't be afraid to do this with flux core or your gas shielded MIG, just whatever you're comfortable with. I wouldn't recommend stick because it's going to be very, very difficult and definitely not TIG because good luck. I mean, you're just going to contaminate your tungstens. But yeah, with that said, thanks for sticking around for the video. I hope you learned something. I know I did, uh, mainly that I'm not going to do one of these for a very long time now. So <laughs> anyways, thanks. Until next time.